Hi, I'm Brett, and welcome to Random Book Talk. I'm very excited to be talking to uh, one of Australia's best-selling and much-loved authors, Judy Nunn, uh, on the eve of the publication of her 12th book, Eliane. Hi, Judy, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Brett, very excited. You know, one of the things that I, I wanted to start off uh, and ask you is, after uh, an enduring and highly successful acting career, you have penned 12 best-selling books and have now sold over a million copies worldwide. The thing that I, that comes to me is what drives you? You know, there must be this burning ambition to, to succeed or to achieve because it is remarkable what you have um, achieved. Yeah, I think my husband would say there's a very simple explanation to this. I'm, I'm just hyperactive, you know. <laughs> uh, but I suppose in a sense I am. I, I love creating and I am very, very fortunate to have, uh, in undertaking two very dicey careers. I mean, if you're going to wake up one morning, you're going to think, now, nah, how am I going to be a millionaire? Oh, I know, I think I'll be an actor. Uh, you know, how am I going to become very rich and famous? I know, I think I'll write books. Mm. They're both very dicey careers. Mm. And both of my chosen careers have been very kind to me. And in a way that, in, in a consecutive way, that is fantastic. Like when I was very uh, young and physically fit and energetic, I was working in the theatre in mm. English rep doing back-to-back -to -back two, two shows, mm. uh, uh, you know. Uh, in fortnightly repertory, uh, you need to be young and fit for that. Then I went into television, which required, uh, for all those years that I did television, uh, really a pretty smooth technical knowledge. You know, mm -hmm. they work at the rate of knots uh, mm. with television soap. This can be a sausage machine factory. You're churning mm. them out. But we're very proud of the quality of work that we put out. Then I decide to write. And do you know, both of those previous careers served me so well. Mm. Because as an actor working in the theatre, I'm working with great playwrights. I'm doing mm. Shaw and Shakespeare and Chekhov and Ibsen. As an actor in soap opera television, I'm working with really tight, professional, uh, gymnastically minded writers, I think, mm. to keep those sorts of storylines going, plotting, mm. uh, characters, uh, 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 cliffhangers, all of that. So I'm picking up from all these levels. And mm. as an actor, of course, always working on a psychological level with other actors working with dialogue, which I use, as you would have noticed, mm. a lot of dialogue. Mm. And as Your you dialogue say, is pitch yep. perfect. But the characters, always, my books mm. are all character driven, again, mm. as you would have noticed. Mm. So I think a very long answer to a question, <laughs> and I promise I'll keep the others brief, mm. but it's such a beaut question. Both mm. of those have really, I think this is what has helped make me successful. I've loved both my careers, mm. but they've helped each other. Yeah, well, um, I, there are a few things there in your answer just then that I'd like to explore a little bit further because I, I've read quite a few of your books and um, for those of you who haven't, head to our website now where you'll be able to find out more about all of Judy's books. But one of the things that, that really strikes me and it's true of Eliane is that the number of characters that you have in your books, that there's quite a lot mm. and they're fully, they're fully developed characters and they're, you know, they're very Australian in many ways, and they, you know, and they, the novels also span often decades. Eliane sort of, well, it sort of picks up at the beginning of the 20th century in some ways, and really spans most of the 20th century. And there's enormous change that takes place on the property, and um, but within Australia, and and how do you manage? all these characters and over such a big time? Uh, well, from a, a practical point of view, certainly, I mean, Eliane, funnily enough, is, is uh, along the lines that you're speaking, um, actually more simplistic, really, than some that I've written. Like, for instance, Beneath the Southern Cross went through uh, seven generations of family. Right. Uh, uh, from uh, the 1760s or something, uh, when the young man had committed a crime yeah. in England and uh, rotted in jail for a while until Australia became the dumping ground for convicts, of uh -huh. course, and then came out here in the First Fleet through to the year uh, 2000. Uh, so that was a big ask. And uh, Tiger Men went through uh, several generations, about three or four generations of three different families. Yeah, yeah, that was that the biggest, was... that was the most complicated one for me as far as 
sort of, you know, genealogy goes and that sort of thing. This one is actually fairly simple. It's one family. Yes. And you simply uh, go back into the past to to see that, that same family several generations ago, but only as yes. these little cut-out bits. Then you're back into the 60s. So it's that was far less complex for me. But nevertheless, uh, the, the way that I do it... Uh, a is family tree on a whiteboard, okay. absolutely. And on that whiteboard, as you say, there are many peripheral characters in my books. Yeah. And quite often they'll be, they're actually really as, um, as a very much a minor character. Yeah. And I'll get so carried away, you know, that I, this, this character will take over. Mm. And in it'll come and become far more important than I'd ever anticipated. Right. So I actually write down just the names of each of the peripheral characters and say so-and-so's mate or the, the, the guys that he went to war with or, or mm. her school girlfriends in mm. case somebody comes back to haunt me later in the book. <laughs> okay. uh, so they all sit up there on the whiteboard. The whiteboard is really important tool for me. Right. I guess we should start telling people, I guess, a little bit more about the book, Eliane. Yeah. It's, um, it's set in Queensland and, and Eliane is the name of, of a property. Yes, uh, my fictional. A, a big sugar plantation which has a mill on the property and um, it's a very interesting place to set a book and it and I should say that the Eliane is named after um, a woman yes. um, who was named Ellie or yeah. Eliane and Ellie and Big Jim are, are kind of in the background of, of the story. They're kind of the people who, you know, in many ways started the family mm. or at the head of the family. This is your first book that you've set in Queensland, it's your 12th as, I, as I've mentioned, is there a reason that you've taken so long to, to, to set a book in Queensland and what was the inspiration? Oh, double barrel question there. There's no specific reason why I've taken such a long time to get around to Queensland. Uh, because, let's face it, there are so many stories in Queensland, mm. but there are so many stories in, although our history is young, that we have mm. so many stories in mm. so many states. But I must say, every time I go to Queensland, Queenslanders are so embracing. They, <laughs> well, of me anyway, I feel mm. very privileged. And every time I go there, it's always been, when are you going to set a book in Queensland? Mm. So I have wanted to, and mm -hmm. I've been thinking, which book, which area, which mm. historical period? Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, yes, sugarcane country, uh, I did. And I went to Bundaberg, uh, which is a gorgeous ta town mm. in the in the uh, southern Canefields region mm -hmm. uh, of Queensland, and I I uh, had been directed towards this really great bloke called Ian Gibson. I'm sure Ian won't mind me mentioning mm -hmm. that. Um, and and he uh, uh, he is one of the family who who uh, his whole family. Uh, had one of the great sugar estates, which mm -hmm. still exists, but I'm no point in naming it because this is a completely fictional state. Mm. But I wanted Ian's expertise as a sugar maker. Uh, he's a man a deal older than me, actually, mm -hmm. so he's no spring chicken, but uh, a very vibrant man and with a great love of the local history, etc. Now, Ian took me along to his sugar mill, mm -hmm. not his. It, it's now run by a great mm -hmm. uh, conglomerate and everything like this. Uh, but it's a vast sugar mill, one of, one of these several still existing in that area. And the first thing I walked in was the smell. And I'm there in what they call the slack season, mm -hmm. where the crushing is not taking place. So you've got these giant machines, all mm -hmm. eerily silent. It's mm -hmm. And this cathedral-like maze of... Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, a sugar mill is an extraordinary place. And it was all quite... And the smell hit me, this sort of toffee treacle smell mm. of burnt sugar and it was the first thing I said to Ian I said oh my god the smell and he said yes he said I love it mm. and I thought yes you would you'd either love it or you you'd hate it mm. and it was that smell that was my inspiration wow. and I suddenly thought right I will make this sugar cane I will make I will, and I fell in love with Bundaberg so I thought, yes, mm -hmm. it'll be a it'll be a Bundaberg region mill. I won't go up north to Mackay mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, I'll keep it in this region. But and I started the book. The very first sentence of the book is some people didn't like the smell, mm -hmm. and so the smell actually was my inspiration. And wow. I find that extraordinary that the smell because then I thought to myself, that smell would never have changed mm -hmm. when Ellie and Big Jim, when Big Jim mm -hmm. created 
the plantation, mm. the mill, the grand estate, which mm. he called Eliane. Because they were big communities. Huge. Too, whole estates that had a village of people the working for them. And people and now they were you, self There was really no reason to leave, was there? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Because, I mean, it took you ages to get there. Mm. I mean, you couldn't, you could, there were no cars. Mm. You couldn't just commute. There were no roads. Mm. Mm. So that people came out and settled there and, and there'd mm. be a butcher shop and a dairy mm. and, you know, and all of this sort of thing. Uh, so when Big Jim named his estate uh, uh, Eliane after his wife, uh, a French plantation uh, owner's daughter from mm. Vanuatu, which of course then mm. was the New Hebrides, uh, called Eliane de Marais. Mm. And he named the estate after her. She then mm. became known as Ellie. Ellie. Uh, yeah, th they would have known the same smell. Yeah. And I thought, right, now my gang are here in the 1960s, yeah. which is a huge change in yeah. sugarcane yeah. development because it's when mechanisation came in. Yeah. So the cane cutters were suddenly obsolete mm. or in a, within a decade. Mm. Everything was being harvested mechanically. Mm. They still would have had the same smell. The same smell. Yeah. Isn't How romantic. That intriguing? It, actually, is romantic. It, is, it is a romantic book yeah. in, in some ways. Um, I, I, I know from talking to your readers that, you know, one of the things that people love about your books is the, uh, you know, the, the history, the Australian mm. history. And I learnt, I mean, I'm, I'm originated from sort of wheat and, and sheep farming country, so cane, sugar caning is quite different. And I learnt quite a lot um, from mm. reading your book and, you know, there's a lot of history, a lot of work, I assume, that goes into to every story. How did you go about researching for well, Eliane? Yeah, well, there were several trips to Bundaberg. Yep. And as I say, Ian was mm. greatly helpful mm -hmm. uh, with the, the sugar area. Then, of course, there's books. Look, I love the net. I love Google. I love, you know, yeah. press a button and call it. But you've got to be very careful. Yeah. You, you really do have to. Uh, b because, oh gosh, look, one beauty I bumped into, uh, I, I, I surfed and I found, yes, a bridge uh, that I had built in, I think, uh, 1895, the second bridge that forded the Burnett mm -hmm. River. And it, yeah, I sent him some stuff to check for me with research-wise. It was just the, the sugar stuff, actually, because he's the expert. And he said that bridge wasn't built until 1955. <laughs> and I said, but there were three sources on the net I found. He said, I know, I looked them up. Mm. And somebody's obviously got, oh, well, this will be right. I'll put this in my notes yes. too. You've got to be so careful. Yeah. Uh, so the other great help was Bundaberg Library. Right. Lovely okay. librarian called Sue Gammon. And I, I, going back to Bundaberg on my book tour coming up shortly, yes. I, I uh, have just sent back a great big box of books that right. Sue Gammon looked out for me. Yeah. So I put my head into the books and about a half a dozen trips to Bundy. Right. And the Bundaberg people who were so forthcoming and yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. town itself. And of course you walk through a place that you're going to set a book in and you have a love affair with it and you yeah. see it back in various periods. You can see it yeah. in your mind's eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you look at the pictures and as yeah. you walk the, the modern day streets, you right. can see it back in the 60s, you can see it in the 1890s. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a great ad for Bundaberg actually. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've never been. Oh, it's a beaut town. It's yeah, a beaut yeah. area, yeah. I have to ask you, um, you know, on, on the your new book, um, it, it says quite boldly at the top, over one million books sold worldwide. That is an incredible achievement. Few Australians have ever done it. How, how, how does that make you feel, knowing that so many people ha have read and enjoyed your books? Well, that I think that, that's the one, Brett, uh, that it, it, it's not actually, I mean, a million really is, is a figure. It's a very big figure. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very impressive figure. Mm. And I'm grateful to obviously to everybody who's bought my book and to everybody at Random House who was who has promoted my books mm -hmm. to achieve this number but it's the thought that all these people have have read it mm. and as you yourself you said to me look if a, a million have bought them it's probably about four million have read them yeah, you know, the I way read people lend them out about, you yeah. know for every well, book bought about four people read it well that's great mm. I loved you for saying that thanks <laughs> and uh, but yeah I mean it 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 never ceases to uh, have a great impact upon me when mm. people come up to me and say I love your books because obviously it takes me two years to write a book mm -hmm. from when I first start researching to when you mm -hmm. know uh, it's it's yes. handed over to Random House and the edit is done and that um, and obviously I go and live in this world mm. that I'm transported to. Mm. And to think that, that all these people who read it are transported not just to my world, mm. they're transported to their own world. 
Yeah. Because they're going to, it's not like going to the movies or turning a television set on. Yeah, it's, it's individual. You, they, they have their own image. Yes. No matter how much a writer writes yes. a character or a scene, yes. each reader is going to envisage it in yeah. their own individual way. Yeah. So they, they've travelled their own journey. So for them to say, I love the journey that I travelled, mm. thank you for providing it, mm. it's actually overwhelming. It is. There are quite a few surprises. It's a story of family, of Australia, of, of sugar cane um, milling and, um, a, and really of change. And, um, and, and as I said, I can't highly recommend it enough. Head to our website now if you'd like to read a sample chapter. Um, at randomhouse.com.au. Um, you can also learn more about Judy Nunn. I mentioned the events, all of Judy's other books. And while you're there, why not download our new books app? Um, and we've got a particular feature on that app at the moment with um, Judy Nunn's books. Thank you so much, Judy. It's been lovely talking to you. Always love chatting to you, Brett. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye.